That's the um, original case I designed, and it uses all the the, the normal GoPro hardware. So it, it would use these buttons here that came off the GoPro camera, and the and that latch, the blue latch. That you can you can buy well you can buy it in any color you want but it's it's an aluminum latch that that you can order off the internet. They cut a section through this, and we can see kind of what's happening here. So it would have a plastic window that's bolt you know that's screwed on with with a flathead screws and sealed. And this is a normal GoPro bezel and the latch on the top. But see, in order to use all of this stuff, and also, I could I make a I could make a mount if I want to use GoPro as accessories. This would fit on on the the other case too as well to hold things like that. But if we get rid of this latch, see it has this little thing that keeps the spring. So you got to machine all these little parts um, here. Um, and so it's it's kind of like a complicated machining job, and I was wanting to simplify this to some degree. So I designed this one, which is what I'm going to show in the in this video and the machining of it. And it's just more simple type of a thing. And it has this little clasp thing here which will come on and off this way and and it's got kind of a tapered dovetail and so the further you jam it on the tighter it'll get I'm trying to keep things simple here and that the I'm just I, I want to just glue a, a thin piece of plastic here I haven't decided exactly on that and and mold some kind of silicone rubber in here where these buttons are in such a way that I can still depress the buttons but you know it won't leak coolant through there because there's no real external pressure on in the the application that I'm doing so this is what I've designed and what I'm going to try to machine here and so that's what this video is going to be all about so I'm going to show the machining part and then a little bit of, of what uh, we're just going to machine the front in this video actually I should say we're just going to machine this piece here to hold the camera in and then, then of course there's the back well the bezel that's the GoPro bezel itself that mounts in there and then the um, back piece that closes it all off. So this this video is going to show just this piece being machined and then we'll do some other videos of the other parts and ultimately how the thing works in the end. Here's the machining operation. We start with a feed mill to rough off the OD of the stock. This isn't the, really the most efficient way to do it in aluminum but it's the way I did it on this part because I already had the tool in the changer and it was a fast way to program it. Normally I probably would have done this with a larger end mill, maybe, you know, taking deeper cuts at it. It would have been faster. But this was an easy way to get, get through it. This notch on the top of the part is just for the clearance on the tool holders when I do the milling around the part. Let me change to the half inch end mill here. Oh, here I was, um, I had to set up a new tool and so I was looking at it and uh, it, this tool had a radius on it. I didn't need that and also the tool holder was longer than I needed so I was going to take this extension off the tool. This capital tool holding system is nice because you can uh, extend or shorten tools as you want and it still runs true and, and it's very rigid. 
you see the shank is kind of a trigonal shape so it, it it's good in a multitask machine like this because it uh helps the tool orient the tool when you, the spindle orient and clamps for turning tools in particular this is really nice because you don't have to rely on keyways and stu such that are like on cat tapers to do that I happen to have this half inch end mill laying on the bench it looked pretty good so I put it in the collet chuck here uh, these collet chucks are these um, they're sold by Big Kaiser their Big Daishoa is the brand and they use this like one-way bearing on the wrench. There's no notches in the in the nut, as you can see. So put this back in there with the shorter tool shank. Touch it off on the work. I turned a little diameter up there further. Up there you see on the work, I turned it so that I'd have a known diameter to touch tools off on. Touch it with a with a dowel pin here. And this roughs out the inside cavity of the um, case here and roughs off and finishes the OD of the part as well. I sped this up because uh, we don't want to just watch all this forever in a video. You get the idea and if you listen to the sound of this it's kind of interesting because you can see why this kind of a a milling cycle works pretty good where you don't get a lot of chatter in the corners because it it spends very little time in the corners you can actually hear it by the sound with this sped up video it kind of sounds interesting you can hear it as it makes its cuts into the corners and you kind of get an idea why this kind of a cycle works so good for roughing out pockets like this where it's it's actually taking very short little cuts in the corners otherwise you get a lot of chatter if you go into those corners with full diameter cuts with the end mill and it puts the, it puts less load on the tool as well going into the corners like that I ran. I tried to run as many tools in this video without coolant. These are. This is just cutting some clearance for the cuts when it mills the outside of the box here. Otherwise, you collide the end mill when you plunge down. We'll see in a second here with it. As it comes around here, it has somewhere to go into. Otherwise, you'd be hitting solid stock right there as you come around the part. You can get an idea what that notch on the top of the parts for in a set in a minute here. Otherwise, it hit the collet chuck, the nut of the collet chuck on the on the raw stock in the in the chuck of the spindle. It's coming around here, roughing off the outside. You see, it would as it gets down deeper, it would hit the collet chuck there. So that's what that's for. I couldn't really run this tool without coolant on it, but some of the tools further further along in the um, cycle, I tried to run without coolant so you could see what's happening. It's uh, kind of hard to do that all the time with these videos. Um, the previous video where I did the ramshaft, I ran air through the spindle, and that worked pretty good on the steel, but on this aluminum, it, it really wouldn't be good enough. This is milling off the area where there's a little dovetail for the the clamp piece that holds the the back closed when the camera's in the box. And then it's just facing the front off here. Like I say, I sped up some of these tools in the video so you wouldn't have to watch it. And I need to trying to keep this video as short as possible so I could show you all the tools that are happening here. Okay, I checked that. This is a quarter inch end mill. I checked that to see if it was sort of alright. It seemed pretty good. Just touching it off here, same way I did with the half inch end mill. I pretty much had to set up new tools for this whole program. I showed touching a few of them off, but I um, the other ones I didn't 
show that, continually show that, because you get the idea, I think. Um, this is milling the, the hole in the case for the bezel. I'm using the GoPro bezel that comes off the plastic case in this because it has it actually has a glass front on it and it holds up to the coolant all right but their plastic case won't won't stand this coolant for some reason it cracks the plastic so this is just roughing out the the hole through there where that bezel sets in the case i just duplicated the dimensions that i measured off the original gopro plastic case for this part of it Here again, it's using that adaptive cycle to rough this out. It goes all the way through, as you can see, the light coming through there. And then I rough out the, the rough the holes for the, the buttons. I'm going to try to, to uh, fill that with silicone rubber and see if I can activate the buttons on the GoPro. That's milling the seal area for the back cover and, and taking more material out the corners that the half inch end mill left and finishing the bottom of the cavity there. And a little bit of a sort of a rough finish cut on the walls just to leave as little material as possible for the next smaller tool to come in and cut the corners out. And then roughing the little notches for the hinge portion of the back lid. I had to set up a new tool for this, so an eighth inch end mill. It's my tool cabinet here. So I grabbed an eighth inch four flute, standard four flute carbide end mill. And I ground a little bit of clearance on the shank. I didn't show that in the video, but I just did that with the drill and the grinder. So here I gotta change the tool. This is a shrink holder. So this is sort of my poor man's version of a shrink holder I just heat them with a propane torch I've been doing this for years and it worked out fine I've changed the tool probably hundreds of times or more in this tool holder and it if you're careful you won't damage the holder just don't get it too hot when you heat it you don't want to get it like red hot or anything put the new tool in you can see I ground a little clearance on the shank there and not real carefully but it worked I, I cooled it off in the coolant in the machine and then I set it back there and let it cool a little more because you can't just touch a tool off hot because it actually shrinks in length so you gotta let it cool off I touched it off and here this is a a rest machining operation so on the roughing cycle on most cam softwares you can select a rest rest cycle they call it which is a it, it takes what remains that the, the previous tools didn't get out of the corners and such. Um, and this looks kind of funny because I put the camera on the spindle and it goes up and down with the spindle so it looks like the parts going up and down but actually the spindle is going up and down here. So this is just roughing out what couldn't be got out of the corners with the quarter inch end mill. And then I take a, some finish passes along the wall. The, the bottom of the cavity is already finished with the quarter inch end mill. So it's taking very shallow depths of cut multiple times. I think, I, I don't remember, 10 or 15 thousandths a pass. Otherwise, you, you know, you just break the end mill if you take too depth, deep a cut on this kind of a thing. So it just works its way down the corners. This cycle for most cam softwares is pretty much automatic. You just select it and select the depth of cut and it figures out where to put everything based on what material was left by the previous tool. It's 
sorry for the blurry video but there must be a little bit of I don't know um, oil or coolant residue on the camera here even even if you don't have the coolant running that the spindles running like 8,000 rpm on this tool and it throws whatever residue of oil or coolant is on the collet chuck onto the camera and it kind of it's hard to get clear video so this is just the finished pass is around the wall and taking an eighth of an inch depth to cut per pass going around it I think it was feeding at maybe 30 ish into inches a minute something like that 8,000 rpm just till I get down to the bottom here and it's very bottom passes going around little islands in the in the bottom of the pocket and the corners that's why it looks like it's moving away from the wall this is a I had to set up a 16th inch end mill here to I was, I was a little leery about running this without coolant so I have coolant on it it's kinda hard to see what's happening but it's just reducing the radius down further in the in those hinge pockets and then we go up to the front of the camera here and uh, finish out this the through hole where the GoPro bezel fits you kind of see it there and there's a little face seal recess groove that the GoPro cameras case had in it as well and it machines that for the rubber seal that seals the whole thing with just the dimension, I just took the dimension straight off the GoPro case for that. So here's a 20 degree tapered end mill to uh, put a tapered entryway and it, it just duplicates what the GoPro case had where the back seal goes into the case. In fact the standard, this hole that I've machined in there will fit the standard GoPro back. I had to get a new spot drill here. I was looking for one in the cabinet. It's going through these ones I already had in there. They all had kind of chips on the tip and I needed a spot down small diameter for the 16th inch end mill. I mean a 16th inch drill. And so this long one was the only one that had a good tip on it. But So I went ahead and chose it to touch it off here it's where the the GoPro case had these two little uh, alignment holes that the bezel has that are sixteenth of an inch in diameter and then it has the the four holes that hold the screws I'm checking the spot diameter there to make sure a, a, a center drill doesn't have a perfect tip on it to a sharp point so you have to kind of adjust the Z depth a little bit to get the diameter exactly what you want. So these four holes are the are the screws that mount the that it's spotting right now. And then those two were the um, alignment holes, and these are the last ones are three quarter twenty holes in the bottom. This is sixteenth inch drill putting the those two alignment holes that GoPro uses. I guess it's so they won't put the bezel in upside down. And then these are the mounting screw holes. And then the counter bores on the back of those mounting screw holes for the heads of the screw with the eighth inch end mill. And this is a dovetail cutting on this thing that's gonna my clasp thing is gonna hold the case back closed with this dovetail cat catch like thing I'm gonna use. Kind of chamfer on the buttonholes. The top buttonhole. Chamfer the front face around the outside. And the buttonhole here on the front button and the top button. And a chamfer on the back of the front front buttonhole here. I'll 
come in. I'm cutting a groove in these buttons to hopefully this will help retain the... I'm going to try to use silicone rubber or something in here so that will be flexible so I can push the buttons. Hopefully, I don't know, I have to, this is kind of an experiment. I'm going to have to see how this works so I can flex this enough to push the button on the camera from the outside of the case. And this sequence of tools is just putting the side button hole in through the case. Probably don't even need this button on the case. I think I can operate the camera without it, but I'll put it in here just to see. So it's the same, it's a quarter inch end mill coming into the tool changer. Chamfer the back of that buttonhole. And you can hear chamfer the front. And then I'll come in here with the little, um, saw or key cutter or whatever you want to call it and just put a groove in there this is just a ball end mill cutting the radius on the case where the hinges are so that the door can open the back door can open I didn't have a corner rounder that size. It would have been faster to use a corner rounder, but I didn't have that tool. And then drill for the quarter 20 thread. And I came in with the eighth inch end mill and flat box. Oh no, I didn't show that in the video for some reason. I did, I, I flat bottomed those holes with the 8th inch end mill, but for some reason I didn't show it in the video. This is a thread mill, the milling the threads. Quarter 20 threads. Notice it's taking two steps up and down in Z because the, the cut length of the thread mill, is, it, it only has three threads on it, so you have to take two different passes here, up and down to get the full thread. So that's the whole machining operation there. And then I think here I'm, I gauge the threads. The, with a thread mill, you have to test it with a thread gauge because it's not like a tap. You don't know if it's the right size till you check it. Um, finished part. Well, not really finished. I just sawed this off the bar here to get rid of the, you know, the round bar off the end of it. But let me move the camera down here and, and get a kind of a look at it on the bench here. I want to install the GoPro bezel on here and see how the camera fits into the thing. So let me direct this down here a little bit on the bench and see if we can uh, install this bezel on here. And I cut the this groove in here, the face groove, to match their. Uh, this is the seal that comes with the that's in the GoPro camera here and it um it fits in there like that and then we got the bezel which has these two little um see these two little holes here that align with these tits on the bezel i guess you'd say and i guess i guess it's so they at the factory or whenever they build these things they can't put this thing in up, upside down by mistake maybe so you just it, it it won't fit because of these things. I'm not sure if it even fits upside down. Let's see something here. Um, 
not really it won't even fit anyway I'm not really sure what those things do but anyway they're in there so that they know which way to put it on I guess I don't know so this seal that is in every GoPro case goes in there like that and then this thing they go on here and we should be able to screw this thing in here let me see if I can do this um, it'll be kind of tricky here see if I can start these screws in here somehow now um, I think I'm going to need some uh, tweezers. Let me go get them. Okay, we're back here. Found some of these hemostat things. I think they'll work. So we can get these screws in the holes here. See if this can go together. Oop. Maybe. I can do this. This, this blue thing here is a, an aluminum latch you can buy off the internet for a GoPro camera. But the problem is with that is that the, the plastic case is so weak that that thing just breaks the case eventually. I mean, it works for a while. And it would be good, I guess, to replace the... Um, replace the latch on any normal GoPro case. I tried that thinking that that would solve some of my problem and uh, it helped but you know the latch part of it but it didn't uh, it didn't really solve any problems other than that. So I got the screw started now should be able to tighten these things up. I want to stick the GoPro camera itself in here. These people in this machine shop over here, they like to blow the air hose like forever. You probably can hear that in the background. So, tighten these screws down. I'm trying to hold this so you can see it on the camera. And that should... Those, those screws have little torque drives in them. I happen to have this set of, you know, cheapy screwdriver things and then they have a torque drive that fits that so that appears to be the case with the the bezel on it that fit all right seems to be working now let's let's here's the GoPro camera I've dropped this camera like uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to get a new one I think it's broken right here corners broke off of it where the battery compartment latch is um, these are kind of weak in this area but let's see it fits in here like so it looks like that fits pretty good let's see it's like the front button lines up alright top button it's a little bit off but I can't really move it over that way because it'll get into the seal area and this button on the side is, it looks like it's, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, it's, it might be up a little bit, so this hole is down a little bit too far in the case. I might have to modify that a little bit. And if I could move it out this way, that direction a little bit more, it would help too. So I could get to that. But other than that, it looks like the camera fits in there all right. It should work. Turn the camera on and see if it... One thing that I recently learned about these GoPro cameras, this, this, um, this is the Hero 4 Silver one, is that if you um, double tap the back screen, I didn't realize this for a long time, and if, see right now it's in the wide mode, I don't know if you can read that, it says wide. If I double tap the screen, now it goes to the medium. You put something so you can see it in the screen. And then if I double tap it again, it goes to the narrow mode. Double tap it again, it goes to the wide mode. 
I, I didn't even realize it did this till I found out by accident. Double tap goes to the medium, double tap goes to the narrow, back to the wide. It does that, and as well as if you sli swipe this way, I guess I should have seen from these little arrows on the screen, you get this uh, display to do the editing. So, I mean, you know, to set it up, I guess you'd say, and and play it back and everything. So this button on the right hand side of the camera isn't really even necessary if if the um, if the if you um, have a, a um, kind of a membrane on the back of the case so I kind of plan to do that with the back door put like a, a thin plastic uh, window in it because I, I'm not worried about pressure here so much this will even work you know even if it's covered with um, something like this and you and you well if I can hold it still and, and you swipe it it'll even do it through um, see through cloth I mean well this rag I mean this is a not cloth but a paper towel so I don't I'm not sure exactly how this works it won't go through real thick plastic but if it's thin enough you know it, it'll um, work so I want to get some maybe some mylar or something and make the back window out of something that the coolant won't attack and, and I can uh, operate the camera through here. If that were the case, I wouldn't need this, this button on this side of the case at all. Because normally you push that to get into this mode, but, but you can actually push, you know, do that, and then you can get into the, all the modes you need to get into as far as the, this is concerned. You know, you can go to the setup here instead of pushing the button to go to the setup on the side. So if I can get that to work, I don't I don't need the side button and I might eliminate that hole in the side of this case. It's just one more point of leakage. But anyway, so th th this goes in here like so. And see it seems to be working all right. I don't know if you can make that out on the video or not. Light might be wrong. So you double tap on this and it changes the field of view just to tap on the screen. And that works through the normal uh, GoPro windowed back case. The one with the thin plastic window. And, which is what I use in the machine. So everything looks like it would function. I. I I might want to, well the record button, I can't really move anymore towards the back of the case because it, it, it'll be cutting into this ledge for the seal, which, well I could probably move it back maybe uh, 20 or 30 thousandths, might try that. So it appears like, uh, let me turn the camera off, don't run the battery down. It appears like everything's would work. This, these holes I just put in here so I could either mount um, a thing that simulates the GoPro forked mount or I could just mount it directly to a tripod with a quarter 20 thread on it. I think I, I've got an idea about these hinges I want to change. I was going to put little pins in from the side but I think I think what I'm going to do is mill slots in here and just put the pins permanently in the cover so that I can hook the cover over there and close it and then then I'll put my keeper thing on here to keep it closed so it's sealed so I think I might change the design a little bit here and mill just little grooves in here such that they go back to the pivot point with a 16th inch ball end mill and then I'm going to have 16th inch pins that protrude out of the hinges on the on the lid enough so that I can set it on there and then pivot it around and close it. Uh, let me get the regular GoPro lid that's from my other case. It should fit in there. It's 
So this is the um, kind of dirty because it's been in the machine, covered with coolant and everything. Uh, my my uh, lid that I'm going to make has the same. Um, I'm going to use the same seals. You know, these. I'm just going to pull a seal off of one of the lids. This one has a black seal on it. The clear lids have, or clear cases, I should say, have, have, um, like white, a white seal of some sort on here. But I'm, I'm just going to use the same seal. It should, but this is actually the same size here. It, the hinge parts, normally that are normally on the other cases, wouldn't reach here. But this should fit in here and seal like that so it does it does fit the normal back piece actually fits in there because it's the same dimensions as the GoPro case in this area so what I was thinking on these was where my bosses come out of the out of the lid I can I can just hook it on there the pins and then rotate it around and shut the case like that and that should that should be fine. See this this GoPro case has a thin plastic membrane type of thing. I measured it thickness. I think it's about six thousandths thick of some kind of plastic, like mylar or something like that. And if I put that on the back of the of the regular case of this case, I mean, I can I can uh, I can operate the. the case the camera through that through that plastic and that'll work fine for me because I'm not worried about pressure like going deep into the water or something the reason the reason that they build the case the way they do the GoPro case is because when you're going down into the ocean or something like that you this little button these are the parts out of a GoPro case but this little button here has a small diameter on it right here for a reason because when you have pressure on the outside of the case of course it's going to be the the pounds per square inch against this diameter whatever area it is it's going to push the button so if you had a big diameter here of course it would it would automatically push the buttons and turn the camera off or put it or whatever and so they make this as small as possible with a when they have a little o-ring that goes in their case if you've ever taken one of these apart here that seals around this in the case and they have this very small area here so that it, it won't you know if the pressure if you go down 30 feet deep in in the ocean it's not going to push this button against the spring enough to to activate the button in the camera this is the spring they put behind the the button in the normal GoPro case here so that's the I guess the reason well I know it's the reasoning behind that stuff. but in my case I'm not really um, worried about that because I don't really have any external pressure to speak of I just got to keep coolant from getting on the on the camera so I'm I'm going to try to mold some uh, silicone rubber into these grooves, into these things, these holes, and hopefully it'll be flexible enough to where I can activate the button. Or maybe I'll have to put something in the middle of it so I, when I push on it, you know, like a, I don't know, a piece of, a little piece of plastic or metal or something, and, and it pushes against the button. But, it, but it'll still clear the camera when I put it in the case. That's the, the reasoning here behind this. So uh, we'll have to see how that works. I, I'm looking into some kind of a um, primer stuff to prime this aluminum with, maybe, so that when I put the silicone rubber in there, it'll stick to it real good. Um, Loctite makes various primers for this purpose, and we'll see how. Uh, and I put that groove, this groove, in the in the in the holes. For the purpose of, of um, 
locking that rubber in there better too and seal it, making it seal. Like I say, there's no external pressure to speak of. And uh, so I think it, it, it just got to seal out the coolant. If the coolant is splashing up against there or, or, or hitting against it, I don't want it to go in there and get on the camera. I have to still face this. This is the boss left on there from the the machining operation when I cut it off the rod with the bandsaw. I have to just face that off. And on this one, I got to cut two little grooves on each of the ends of these. Like I said, I was going to drill holes, but I think it'd be better just to cut grooves in here so that I can hook the the, the back cover on and just pivot it closed and then I'm going to slide my little uh, dovetail latch thing on here to keep it closed. This thing, I actually have a design uh, they, uh, and I'll show it in the video where I designed it to use this latch that you can buy and and but it and use these buttons and everything and all that off of the original case but it's kind of complicated and I was trying to simplify this machining job if I could on this thing. We're gonna see how this works just like this. Should seal all right. So so far so good. Just gotta make the back and see how it it uh and and somehow cast these buttons in here with some rubber, silicone rubber or something, and see how this whole thing works.